Here's another simple gas law, Avogadro's law. This relates the volume of a gas and the number of moles of gas. Up until now, we've been assuming that the amount of gas in the container stays the same, but sometimes it might change. We might put some more in, let some out, or create some in the, in the chamber. So what, um, what Avogadro did is he looked at the volume of a gas at a constant temperature and pressure while he varied the number of moles in the sample. And so what he found was that if, as you added more gas to the container, the volume went up. This makes a lot of sense intuitively, right? When you blow into a balloon, you're putting more air into the balloon. Does it get bigger or smaller? Of course it gets bigger. You put more gas into it. So what's neat about this, though, is it's a direct proportion. It gives us a straight line. The volume is directly proportional to the number of moles of gas. It increases linearly. And this was first stated formally by Amadeo Avogadro. And he was born the same year as our country, 1776. Except he, I think he was Italian. I don't know that for sure. Don't quote me on that. So Avogadro's law says the volume of a gas and the amount of the gas in moles are directly proportional. It can be stated as volume is proportional to N. We represent the number of moles with the lowercase n. Or we can say V1 over N1 is equal to V2 over N2. And that's the one that's useful for solving problems. You blow into a balloon, you add gas, molecules, of course, it increases in volume. Let's do a problem. A 4.8 liter of helium gas, 4.8 liter sample of helium gas, contains 0 0.22 moles of helium. How many additional moles of helium gas must be added to the sample to obtain a volume of 6.4 liters? This one has a little, little glitch in it, a little trick. Well, let's just go ahead and make our table. So we've got one and two. And the first thing I see is 4.8 liter sample. 4.8 liter sample. So that is the volume. And that has 0 0.22 moles of helium gas. The symbol for moles of gas is a lowercase n. And then I see volume of 6.4 liters. I'm going to put that in here. 6.4 liters. Clean this up a little bit. Well, I'll label that N2, and we can find out what N2 is. We use Avogadro's law, V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Another equation with a fraction Cross multiply to get rid of the fraction. I'm looking to solve for N2. So that's this guy right over here. I'm going to divide by V1. And I have to do that on the other side. N2 equals N1 V2 over V1. So N1 is 0 0.22 moles. And V2 is 6.4 liters. And V1 is 4.8 liters. And the liters cancel out. And I can solve for N2. N2 is 0.22 times 6.4 divided by 4.8, 0 0.29 moles. 
Is that the answer to the question, though? We have a sample. Let's call it a balloon, because that's more familiar than pistons and cylinders. We have a balloon that has 0.22 moles of gas. What, is, what does N2 represent? We're, we've added, we're adding gas, and so the volume is increasing. It's going from 4.8 to 6.4. Is N2 the amount of gas that we're adding? No, it's the final. It's the final moles of gas, right? When the balloon is 6.4 liters, it will have a total of 0.29 moles of gas in it. So how much gas had to be added? The difference, 0 0.07, OK? These problems tend to be challenging for students. I don't know what they did to you guys in elementary school. They like poisoned your minds or something. You can do these. You really can. But it's not going to be just obvious. You have to sit and think about it for a while. Puzzle through it. What exactly does that mean? Come back to it later. Ask somebody else for a little help. You can figure it out. So this is the moles of gas in the balloon at the end, but the question wants how much was added. So I'm going to take that 0.29 minus 0.22, and that's going to be 0 0.07 moles of gas needs to be added. Any questions? This is what I consider a somewhat tricky problem. And it's the ones that have Avogadro's law that tend to be like this. Because the other ones, the amount of gas is always constant. And so we're not adding stuff. You could also have one where they're taking away gas. Let's do another one. A chemical reaction occurring in a cylinder equipped with a movable piston, there's that piston guy again, produces 0.58 moles of a gaseous product. If the cylinder contained 0.11 moles of gas before the reaction and had an initial volume of 2.1 liters, what was its volume after the reaction? As I'm reading this, I'm realizing that the question is not a great one. So a chemical reaction is producing a gaseous product. It had this amount of gas in it to start with. They're not really being real clear about what happened to this moles of gas. Was that the reactant? Did it get used up? Or is that still in there? We're going to assume that this um, was some, some gas not involved in the reaction and that that gas is still in there. OK, so sometimes it helps to draw a picture. Um, I'm going to draw this cylinder. That's not drawing a cylinder. I'm going to draw this cylinder on its side. All right, so this is the piston that can move in and out. And what I have in here is 0.11 moles of gas. Then there's a chemical reaction that's happening inside, and it's generating 0.58 moles of gas. So that's being added to the, what was in there originally. So now I'm adding 0.58 moles. I would not ask this on an exam because I think it's not very clear. The other one, the last one we did was fine. So what's the final volume, and not the final volume, what's the final number of moles of gas then? It's the two of those added together, right? 0.69. So you started out with 0.11 moles. And after adding this, now we have 0.69. These types of addition and subtracting problems are ones that you should be able to do in your head. But as I'm grading your lab reports, it's amazing how many people just make 
stupid brain fart errors when they're doing that. Go ahead and use your calculator. It's okay. Calculator is really good at stuff like that. Okay, so we're still going to have a table here. Um, so this 0.11 is our moles of gas initially. And the volume was 2.1 liters. This, this problem is just a bit more complicated to decipher. We figured out by drawing a picture and thinking about it that the final number of moles of gas is 0.69. And then, so this is N and this is V. And we're trying to find the final volume. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Cross multiply to get rid of the fractions. I know some of you can rearrange that in your head. That's fine. And then I'm... Thank you. Yes. Yeah. It's not an N, it's a T. Get rid of... Okay, thank you very much. And... Come on, stylus. N1 and N2, and there's N and N. Okay. V1, N2 equals N1, V2. And then I'll divide by N1, and I'll divide by N1 over there. I don't know what I did to offend this stylus. He's very offended. V2 equals V1 N2 over N1. So volume 1, 2.1 liters. N2, 0 0.69 moles. Divided by N1, 0 0.11 moles. Moles cancel out, liters remain 2.1 times 0.69 divided by 0.11. All of these are three sig figs, so our answer should have, I'm sorry, two sig figs, so our answer should have two. 13 is the answer, 13 liters. Does it make sense that the final volume is larger? Yeah, because gas was created from solids or something in a reaction in the container. More moles of gas, bigger volume. Any questions?